The goal of this project is to figure out how fast this Nerf gun shoots in meters per second or feet per second. This will be based on spring constants and possibly fluid dynamics. To figure out how fast this Nerf gun fires, we need to know a few things. We need to know the spring constant as well as how far the spring is pulled back in order to find the potential energy stored in the spring. Okay, so right now we can see the spring of the gun. The spring is inside the tube, and when this is pulled back and fired, it pushes air through the plunger and into the barrel. First thing to do is take out the spring. Based on prior testing, I already know that this spring has a spring constant of 412 newtons per meter. The next thing to figure out is how much it compresses to find the X. As you can see by the notch in the plunger tube, the spring is held into place in the front portion of the plunger tube to create potential energy. This distance is about five and a half centimeters because the trigger mechanism takes up part of the space. We also know that the spring is about 18.1 centimeters long so because of that we know that the diff that the difference how much the spring is compressed the X is would be 12.6 centimeters this dart weighs approximately 0.7 grams now that we have all portion all parts of this we can figure out the velocity by a simple physics equation these are the two formulas that I will be using to figure out the velocity of the Nerf dart. Based on these calculations, V should be 96.665 meters per second. Because I cannot test in meters per second since I only have yardsticks, I would be testing in feet per second, so here's the conversion to feet per second. This Nerf gun should in theory fire at 318.9945 feet per second. What I am doing here is using this microphone to record the sound of the Nerf gun firing and the sound of the dart hitting this metal screen. I'm recording it on my computer so that I can look at the time elapsed between the two sounds so I can get feet per second out of that. What we're looking at right here is the sound the Nerf gun makes when it fires but zoomed in so you can see that it's a really small amount of time. And you can see that the first smaller jump is when the Nerf gun fires and the second jump, the larger one, is when the Nerf gun hits the screen. And you can see this is about a 0 .13, 0 .013 second difference between the two for one foot which is not nearly as fast as the computation said which means that there's an error in the computation and that it, it, we need to do it a different method. This plunger rod moves forward based on the, the potential energy of the spring pushing the plunger rod forward through the plunger tube where the air in the plunger tube is displaced through the coupler and into the barrel. Because the barrel and the plunger tube are two different widths, we can use fluid dynamics to f figure out the speed of the air in the plunger tube and in the barrel. Because the sections when the Nerf gun fired in all, in all of these three tests look about the same, I can use any one of them to zoom in to zoom in to find the time difference between when the Nerf gun is fired and when the Nerf dart hits the wall. Marking off the the loudest points of both of these, which would be the Nerf gun firing and the Nerf dart hitting the wall, shows about a 0 0.015 second difference between the gun firing and the dart hitting the wall three feet later. This is about 200 feet per second, which, while it is about 50 feet per second short of what the data of what the data showed, 
it is quite possible that the that the Nerf dart experienced air resistance and resistance in the barrel. This is a pretty good result that shows that it's quite simple to figure out approximately how fast Nerf gun fires based on a few physics principles. The Mythbusters tested it and proved that it's always best to end with a bang. And because this is a physics project, I feel that we should honor the Mythbusters by ending with a potato cannon. Let's go outside and shoot some stuff. For this section to pertain to my physics project, I have to discuss potato cannons and how they work. How potato cannon works is you spray fuel on one end, have a projectile on the other end, cover both ends, and ignite the fuel so that it creates pressure launching the projectile. Now, an example of this is the fact that the potato cannon will not fire if both ends are open because no pressure is able to build up. Nothing. Now, when you cover one end and allow slight amounts of pressure to build up, Flames come out of the top. Now, the best example of how a potato cannon works is when both ends are covered. Here we have our aluminum foil potato. We don't have a big yard, so we kind of can't launch potatoes. Ramrod. So now, I'm going to spray fuel in, cap the end, and launch the tinfoil ball. This cap will allow pressure to build up. Now, I fire the potato cannon.